Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. How are you guys doing? Things are good with me. My semester's going well. Next week is fall break already. Although we only have one uh, Friday off, we don't have the whole week off. Instead, we get the entire week of Thanksgiving in November. So that's really nice and we can't really complain. We do have a few more weeks to go before that though. At home, my husband has finished building our new deck. He just kind of up and decided to tear our old one down back in August. Well, some of the wood was rotting out where the deck attached to the house. So he wanted to fix that and he did. And then he built a whole new deck all by himself. He is a super carpenter and I am not. <laughs> I can't say that I helped all that much, but I did hold a few things in place while he screwed them in. And I did help with a, the design a little bit. I picked out the solar lights that are on the posts on the railing. But other than that, I mostly just supervised. Um, the new deck has the same basic footprint as the old one, but we changed some features that I'm really happy with. Um, one thing is that John made the stairs twice as wide as they used to be and there are solar lights all along both sides of the stairs so you can actually see when you go outside at night. <laughs> and um, I like the railing a lot better that he built for this new deck than the old one. And then on the side of the deck toward the front of the house, he put up a couple of lattice panels which give a little privacy. So we've been enjoying the deck in the evenings over the past few weeks. In fact, for my birthday last month, um, we got a propane fire bowl that we can use on the deck. And it is awesome because there's no smoke and there's no ashes to clean up afterwards. And we've had several fires in that so far, and I know we'll be using it a lot this fall. I also wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who has sent me cards and letters and postcards over the past few weeks. I love getting snail mail and I adore hearing from you, so keep writing please. I'm steadily getting my replies out in the mail, so watch your mailbox if you haven't already gotten a card from me. The theme of today's show has to do with what's new in knitting, so I thought I would tell you about a nifty new gadget that you can use to measure your gauge. Now for anyone new to knitting, let me just explain quickly the concept of gauge. Before knitting up a big project, especially a garment like a sweater that needs to fit correctly, many people knit a swatch, which is a small sample of what the knitting will look like. And a swatch might be five or six inches square, and you would use the exact yarn and needles that you'll be using for the project itself. That way you can see how the yarn is gonna knit up, what your stitches look like, and how tight the stitches are. The reason for knitting a gauge swatch is to measure your gauge, and that is the number of stitches horizontally as well as the number of rows vertically in a square inch. Your gauge needs to match up with the gauge indicated in the pattern or else your finished object won't fit correctly. It'll be too big or too small. Now for a lot of patterns, you don't really need to check your gauge, like for scarves or shawls mostly, but for something that is going to be fitted on your body, you probably need to check your gauge ahead of time. So there are a lot of different tools used for measuring gauge. If you don't have a gauge ruler specifically made for knitting, you can just use a regular ruler to measure your stitches per inch. And you also see a lot of this type of gauge ruler, which has a, a inch measurements across the top, and it does have a small cutout on the corner, which gives you two inches horizontally and two inches vertically. But it's recommended that gauge is measured in four inch increments. So you measure your stitch count for four inches and then divide by four to get your number of stitches per inch. And that just makes it a little more accurate. For four inch measurements, people commonly use square gauge rulers like this one. Um, they're usually four inches square and the inside of the square is completely open so you can see all the stitches in rows and be able to count them. 
Now this new swatch gauge is kind of a combination of all of these knitting gauge measuring tools along with some neat additions. This product is the Acre Works swatch gauge. It is made from thick durable plastic. It's not bendable and I think it would be very difficult to break it. It's in the shape of a cross and measuring the outside diameter, the arms are four and a half inches across. Now it has both inch and centimeter measurements etched into the plastic, which is great for people who are measuring in either imperial or metric units. And this allows you to easily count your stitches for four inches or 10 centimeters. This swatch gauge has a couple of unique features that make it very useful. And they are first, there are cutouts that allow you to pinpoint one row and one column of stitches so you don't get off accidentally into a different row, which does sometimes happen to me. This way you can measure more accurately the number of stitches and rows you have in four inches or 10 centimeters. And two, each of the plastic arms has little grippy teeth at the end of it. These teeth grasp your knitting and hold it steady. And this is another characteristic of the swatch gauge that helps your measurement be more accurate. The whole thing just kind of clamps down on your knitting and there's no need for pulling or adjusting the swatch, which could easily change the stitch per inch or row per inch count. So this handy little gadget will really facilitate your gauge measurement. Even though it's heavy duty plastic, it's very lightweight, relatively small, so you can just throw it into your notions pouch or project bag. And even though it does have these teeth that grip onto your knitting, they're not gonna get snagged on your yarn. And the teeth are pointy, but not so sharp that they'll cut into your skin. Plus I kind of like that when it's set down on a flat surface, the main part of the body is raised up a little bit so you can easily pick it up. So that is the Acre Works swatch gauge, which you can purchase at many local yarn shops or online at the Acre Works website for $16. And I'll include a link to their company website down in the um, information box below so you can check it out if you're interested. Today in the classroom, I'm gonna talk about some new and noteworthy knitting needles. These are needles that have just been released or that became available earlier this year. And I even have a beautiful crochet hook in the mix for those of you who crochet. Now earlier this year, I did a full review of 10 different interchangeable needle sets. And if you haven't seen that, I will link that video below. But the needles I'm gonna show you today were not included in that review and they're not all interchangeable sets either. But my hope is that maybe you'll find something new that you'll wanna try out and that you think might work for your needs. Now with the needles that I'm, I'm gonna talk about today, I'll give you all the measurements and specifications I can to allow you to make your own decisions about whether any of these needles might fit your preferences. The first needles that I wanna to introduce to you are the Knitter's Pride Zings and these come in beautiful interchangeable sets. I have the special set here, which was sent to me by Stitchcraft Marketing on behalf of the Knitter's Pride Company in exchange for an honest review. Now, as I said, this set is the special set, which has the shorter tips and comes with the cords that make a 16 inch circular needle. They are made from aluminum, which is very lightweight, smooth and pleasant to the touch. This already checks off a few of the boxes on my knitting needle preference list. I love the metal needles and the shorter tips. Now the special set comes with seven pairs of needle tips ranging from US size four or 3.5 millimeter to US size 10 or six millimeter. The tips are clearly engraved with both the US and metric sizes. And I really love that the lettering is big enough and easy to read because I swear that in some needle sets, the size markings are microscopic and I can't even read them with my bifocals. 
Also, I already used a set of needle tips for a project and the engraved label did not rub off at all. So let's look at the tips of these needles. And you can see that they are fairly pointy as opposed to being blunt. And that's another check mark off my preference list. I do like very sharp pointy tips on my knitting needles. I actually measured the point diameter on the size 7 needle with a micrometer digital caliper and it was 1.6 millimeter. If you remember back to my previous needle review, these Zing needles are the same needles as the Knitter's Pride Melodies of Life needles that were in my review and their tip diameter measurement put them kind of in the middle of the pack. They weren't the sharpest tips but they certainly weren't the most blunt. The total tip shaft length measures 3.75 inches and when you attach them to the base on the cord, the total tip length is about 4.25 inches. And let's talk about how the needle tips attach to the cord. On this set, the cord ends have tiny screws and the tips themselves are hollow at the bottom and have tiny threads that allow the cord end to be screwed into them. You'll always want to tighten the tips with the little metal key that's provided. Once you get the tip screwed into the cable end, insert the key through the hole in the needle base and then manually tighten to maximize the connection. As far as the taper length, which is the distance from where the tip starts to taper in to the point of the needle, the Zing's measured in at 19 millimeters, and this is exactly the same as the Signature needle, but as you can see in this comparison, the Signatures have more of a straight cone-shaped taper, while the Zing's have a little more curve toward the tip. Still, they are remarkably similar to the Signature needles, which cost like seven times more than the Zing's. Now I used a cotton pad to test the smoothness of the joins and the entire shaft of these needles. I know that some people have had issues with the rough, um, with rough places on other similar needles like the carbons where the silver tip meets up with the rest of the needle shaft. So I wanted to test out the whole shaft in, in addition to the join. And these zings are impeccable. The cotton pad did not catch whatsoever on any imperfections or tiny jagged edges or anything. They are ultra smooth all the way down the shaft to the cord. Now for the cords, these are the same Knitter's Pride nylon cords that come with any of their other interchangeable sets. And I said in my previous needle review video that these are nice cords and I do like them. So if you have other Knitter's Pride interchangeable sets like the Dreams, Carbons, Cubics, or any of the other ones, you can use the same cords from those on this set. And in my previous needle review, I had my students, who are not knitters, rate the Knitter's Pride cords and they scored a 9 out of 10. Now I've purchased a number of Knitter's Pride interchangeable sets myself and I found that the cords are nicely flexible and they don't kink up when I'm knitting with them. Um, another thing I absolutely love about the Knitter's Pride cords is that they're color coded by length. This makes it easier to pick out the one you're looking for and somebody should have thought of this idea long ago. The only characteristic I wish the cords had was swivel joins and that is where the you know the needle tips twist around on the join. None of the Knitter's Pride cords have this but maybe someday they will. We can always hope. A couple other things to mention are that I love the packaging of this set. It comes in a beautiful compact case with a clear vinyl window on the front. There's red and blue fabric framing the window and on the back of the case. And it's a sturdy case with a heavy duty zipper that has a ring attached so that helps you get a good grasp on the zipper making it easier to open and close. When you open the case you'll find the needle tips all organized by size on a platform that is covered with a pretty gold fabric. And then that platform lift, lifts up and underneath you have a clear vinyl zipper pouch where you can store the cords tightening keys, and any other accessories. I like this packaging because it's small and portable. 
it shows off the beauty of the needle tips it's compact enough to carry in your project bag or purse and it's sturdy and will hold up to actually being used this was one issue that i had with other interchangeable needle sets like the melodies of life um, that came out last holiday season the set came in this box and it was definitely beautiful but it isn't very portable if you wanted to take your whole set somewhere you'd have to take this whole big box so it just wasn't very practical and there have been some other needle sets that i've had that were in cases made out of 100 percent clear vinyl that were just not very attractive so i love this small beautiful packaging and another thing I wanted to mention is that these needle tips use the same cords no matter what size they are. You don't have to buy different sizes of cords to use with different needle sizes. And I really like that for convenience as well as cost effectiveness. Now let's talk about the price of these Zing interchangeable sets. Again, the set I have is the special set which has the shorter needle tips and it includes seven pairs of needle tips. The retail price is around $50. There's also a deluxe set which has nine pairs of the longer six inch tips. And the deluxe set has the same needle sizes as this special set, but it also includes US sizes 10 and a half and 11. And the deluxe set costs around $70. So with the Zings, I already used the size seven needles on a project and I have to say, I really enjoy these needles. I found them to be super smooth and the yarn, which was a wool cashmere blend, just glided effortlessly right over the needles and cable, no catching, no problem whatsoever. Honestly, these Zings are a good alternative for the way more expensive signature needles. Um, the tip has some slight differences and the signature does have a swivel cord but the cords are both nylon and the tips are both aluminum and they're both really beautiful. So if you're interested in trying out something like the Signature Needles, but you don't wanna spend $350 on an interchangeable set, the Zing sets are very comparable. Okay, so that was a review of the brand new Knitter's Pride Zing Interchangeable Needle Sets. The next new and noteworthy knitting needles came out earlier this year and they're probably unlike any other knitting needles you've seen before. And these are the Prim Ergonomic Needles and I have a couple of fixed circular needles and two sets of DPNs. Now these needles are not available in an interchangeable set but you can buy fixed circulars, DPNs, and straight needles. They seem to be hard to get in the US, but I was able to find them on Amazon. And my package came from somewhere in Europe. I don't remember if it was the UK or the Netherlands maybe. Um, and it did take a couple of weeks to get them. But they are really interesting and different and I wanted to try them out. Now the Prim ergonomics are made of a rubbery plastic. They feel smooth with a little bit of texture. They're not slick like a metal needle. They also have some flexibility. Um, the needle shaft is a bit bendy. The needle tips are about five inches long on the circulars, and they do have some interesting characteristics. One of the first things you probably noticed is that the tips have a little rounded teardrop shaped bulb on them. The purpose of this tip shape is to help grab the stitches as you're making them and hold the stitches on the needle. The second interesting feature is that the needle shaft is triangular shaped. The very end of the tip is round, but then about one and a half inches from the tip, it turns into a triangular shape. And that triangular shape is to make the stitches more easily slide down the needle as you're knitting. The triangle shape is supposed to minimize the contact points between the needle and the yarn. But honestly, when I look at the yarn sitting on the needle, um, I, it seems to be contacting the whole circumference of the needle, not only the three points of the triangle. Now the needles are white with a purple base and in the middle of each needle is the metric size of the needle is printed clearly. 
I find it very easy to read. The only thing is that it only includes the metric size and not the US size, if that's something that's important to you. It's not that big of a deal to me though. As I said, the tips of these needles are unusual in that they have a tiny bulb at the end of them. I did measure the tip with my micrometer and the, it measured 1.85 millimeters and that is more blunt than the other needles I reviewed in my previous video, but that's not surprising considering the shape. So from the very tip, the needle widens slightly into that little teardrop shape and then narrows back down before tapering down out to the full needle width. Another unique thing about these needles is that the taper itself is very gradual. I measured it and it is about a 30 millimeter taper. The knitting needles that I reviewed in my previous video range from 13 to 19 millimeter tapers. So these prim ergonomics have a taper that's quite a bit longer. And this is something that I really notice when I'm knitting with them. The little bulb does not affect me at all. The little, the little teardrop bulb on the end but the fact that the taper is so gradual and for such a long distance on the needle, I found it difficult to uh, push my stitches down the needle as I was knitting because they would bunch up close to the tip and then be really tight along the widest part of the needle. So I have to be very careful to knit loosely with these needles and I'm not a tight knitter to begin with. Now I did use the cotton pad test to check the smoothness of the joins and the entire shaft of these needles and they did fine. Um, no cotton got caught anywhere on them, but I will tell you that I had an, an issue with a little catch on the plastic where the purple meets the white and it kept on snagging my yarn. So I used a little nail file to smooth it out and it seems to be fine now. Now the cords on the Prim Ergonomics are plastic coated steel. They kind of remind me of the Chow Gu cords, except these are a little thinner. Um, these are very nice cords. They're flexible, pliable, and not prone to getting kinked up. They do not have swivel joins, but still I like the cords on these. As for the price, I got these needles from Amazon and they were between $10 and $12 each. Um, like I said, I got two sets of DPNs and two sets of fixed circulars. Shipping was free and there was no tax. So my total was $43.75 for four sets of needles. I didn't think that was too terribly expensive as that's about the same price or maybe even a little less than a lot of premium knitting needles. Now I'm using the Prim Ergonomic size 7 um, on this shawl project and I like them okay. Um, as I said, um, I've mainly had trouble with that very gradual taper and I need to really pay attention to knit my stitches loosely so they aren't super tight on the needles by the time they work their way up the taper to the full diameter of the needle. Um, I don't usually knit with plastic needles and I don't usually knit with blunt tip needles, but these have been pleasant enough to use. I'm surprised that I don't mind the little bulb at the needle tip and I actually kind of like it. All right, the next knitting needles that are fairly new are these Lika Driftwood needles. I learned how to pronounce Lika by watching Lily from Nordic Stitches, who is a native Norwegian speaker. And Lika is a Norwegian word that means happiness. And these needles are produced there in Norway and they were released for sale in the US earlier this year. They do make a beautiful set of interchangeable needles called the Driftwoods, but I don't have it. Um, you may have seen the Driftwood interchangeable set. Um, I didn't buy it because I hardly ever use wood needles. Um, I just bought this one circular, fixed circular from my local yarn shop. Um, she had just gotten a few in stock, so didn't have many to choose from. I ended up getting a US size 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter, and it has a 32 inch cord. So I just took them out of the package, and honestly, I haven't had a chance to knit with these, so I won't be able to really give you my impressions of knitting with them, but I will give you the measurements and specs on them. 
The Lika driftwood needles are constructed out of solid birch. They're not laminate, but are solid wood, and they have a really pretty rustic look to them with a kind of silvery gray finish. They're lightweight, smooth, and a bit flexible, like most wood needles are. The black bases are metal, and this is where the needle size is etched into them. The etching has both US and metric sizes, which is great, but I will say that the font size is really small. I mean, I can hardly read it. Now, as far as the interchangeable sets, the driftwood needle sets come in two sizes. The standard set has five inch tips and includes 12 pairs of tips ranging from US sizes four or 3.5 millimeter to 17 or 12 millimeter. That's a pretty impressive range of sizes for an interchangeable set. The short tip set has three and a half inch tips with nine pairs of needle tips ranging from US size three, which is 3.25 millimeter to a 10 and a half, which is a 6.5 millimeter, um, which is still a pretty good range of sizes. The tips on these Lika driftwood needles are kind of medium. They're not super sharp, but they're not the most blunt needles either. Um, they're pretty comparable to Knitter's Pride Dreams wood needles in terms of their tip point and taper length. As you can see, there is hardly any difference between the Lika needle on top and the Knitter's Pride needle on the bottom. The total tip shaft length on these fixed circulars measures 5.25 inches. And this would be comparable to the longer tip length in the standard interchangeable set. Um, on the interchangeable sets, the tips screw into the base similarly to the zings that I showed earlier, and you use a little metal key just like on the zings to tighten the connection. Again, I tested the smoothness of the joins by running a cotton pad um, over the needle shaft and the join, and I was really sorry to see that it bombed this test. Both joins have horrible jagged edges that are, I mean, I can even see them. Um, and when I ran the cotton pad over them, the cotton lint stuck to both joins. This was pretty disappointing. These joins are rough. You can feel it with your fingers and see it with your own eyes. Um, you don't even have to run a cotton pad over it. So that's disappointing. Now, as far as the cords, um, these cords I think are made from nylon. Um, they are similar in thickness to the Knitter's Pride cords, but these are a little more stiff. And I honestly think the, it's going to be a little too stiff for me. I can tell you right now, this is going to drive me crazy when I'm knitting with them. Um, they're, yeah, they're just a little too springy. And yeah, this is going to drive me crazy. I feel like this cord is going to get kinked because these don't have the swivel joins and because the cable is so firm. So I have to say I'm not a big fan of these cords or the joins. Uh, the Lika interchangeable sets do come in beautiful cases. One case is made of faux leather and the other is denim. They look very nice and kind of remind me of the Addy Lace Clicks case. So although I don't have the Lika interchangeable set myself, from looking at these sets online, it seems like the packaging is stylish and portable. For pricing, this fixed circular set that I bought was $8.49 at my local yarn shop. But if you're interested in one of the interchangeable sets, the standard set is $125, and that again consists of 12 pairs of the six inch tips. The short set, the short tip set, includes nine pairs of three and a half inch tips and that is around eleven dollars. So overall I'm kind of bummed about the Lika needles. I rarely use wood needles so that's why I didn't buy the interchangeable set but after just playing around with this fixed circular I wouldn't feel compelled to buy the interchangeable set even if I did like wood needles. The joins are extremely rough and the cord would drive me crazy. Now maybe I just got a bad one. Let me know in the comment section below if you have used these needles and had any similar issues with them or if you 
got you know if this is just a bad pair next up is an innovative and unusual set of double pointed needles and that is the curved dpn's by neko this is a german company and these curved dpn's have been out for a while but they're just becoming available in yarn shops in the united states i had ordered this one online but then one of my local yarn shops got them in stock so i have a set of the u.s size one and a half which is this and that's uh, 2.5 millimeter and a set of US size 6 which I'm using on a project and that is 4 millimeter. The needles are made of smooth and flexible plastic. Um, they are also color coded by size which I like but they do not have the needle size printed on them anywhere. As you can see the design of these DPNs is that they have a bend in them. I'm going to say it's around a 70 degree angle. Now the needle is about four inches long and then curves and the other side of the needle is four inches long. The bend in these needles means that you only need to use three needles instead of four when working on a project. Your knitting is held on two of the curved DPNs and then you just knit with the third one. So here's a little clip of me knitting with these curved DPNs. The tips on these Neko DPNs are pretty blunt. Um, my micrometer said that the tip is 1.98 millimeters, which is more blunt than the Denise plastic needles that I reviewed in my previous video. The taper is another short one at about 12 millimeters, so about the same as the Lika needles I just talked about. They are definitely smooth. Um, there are no joins or seams, but I ran the cotton pad along them all around anyway and there was no evidence of any snags or anything like that. As far as the price, I paid $13 for this first set that I ordered online and then I just bought the second set at my local yarn shop for around $11. And I see that there are several options now for buying online from US yarn shops at about that same price. So I'm using these curved DPNs on a hat project that I'm finishing up. I'm just doing the decreases right now and they've been really pleasant to use. Um, I like them because I think they'll help alleviate the ladders that I always seem to get when knitting with regular straight DPNs. Um, because these are curved, I feel like there's less tension on the end stitches so I'm not seeing those loose stitches that I usually get in between the needles. Now one thing that I've noticed is that the stitches st seem to stay on the needles on these curved DPNs better than on straight DPNs, at least in my experience. I've often had stitches slide right off the end of DPNs and I have not had that happen with these. I think it's because they're curved and there's less tension on the stitches so that they're less likely to move. So I've enjoyed using the Neko curved DPNs. Um, I, don't use cur I don't use DPNs all that much. And my favorites, you know, just regular um, DPNs are the carbons, especially for closing the toe on socks. But I have to say that I actually think I'll use these for bigger projects like this hat. Um, Neko does not seem to have a US sized one on, in the curved DPNs. Um, I was able to get this, this was the smallest one. Uh, well, they come in, they have a size zero, but they don't have a size one. They have a 1.5, and that's what this is. But I'm not sure that's going to work since I do socks on a size one needle. But if they ever do come out with a US size one um, DPN curve set, um, I will definitely be trying it out on socks. Okay, the last new item that I want to tell you about is not a knitting needle, but it's a crochet hook. Now you know that I don't crochet very much, but I do often use crochet hooks for picking up drop stitches in my knitting or repairing knitted items. 
So when I saw these crochet hooks online, it's not something that I would normally buy, but, I was, but it was so beautiful that I was smitten. This is a Furls Odyssey crochet hook. I just love the elegant and luxurious look and feel of this crochet hook. This one is a size B or a 2.25 millimeter. I got this size because it would work perfectly to pick up stitches on a sock. These Odyssey crochet hooks have a slim tapered metal shaft made of nickel plated pewter with the hook on top and the handle is ergonomically designed. It's fat and tapered and made out of lacquered wood. The hook just sits in your hand very comfortably without having to strain your muscles at all to hold on to it, whether you hold it like this or you hold it like this. It's extremely smooth and definitely weighs more than a regular crochet hook and the weight distribution along the shaft of the handle is supposed to alleviate um, hand strain. Now this Odyssey crochet hook is six and a half inches long which is a little longer than the other regular crochet hooks I have. Because there is a place on the crochet hook where the metal meets wood, I did do the cotton pad test on it to check for any rough edges, but it passed with flying colors. It's incredibly smooth, even across that seam. The hook itself is very nice. I've actually already used it a couple of times to pick up drop stitches in a project, so it worked great in addition to being beautiful. Now lastly, let's talk about the price. The Furls Odyssey crochet hooks are the lap of luxury for crocheters. This hook in the black and silver runs $30 a piece. They have some other incredibly gorgeous options on their website as well. They have the Odyssey in purple that is $33 each and the pink and gold Odyssey is $66 each. They also have some beautiful pink ivory ones that are $110 each, but one third of the proceeds are donated to breast cancer research on that one. Yes, they are quite a bit more expensive than the you know little Susan Bates ones that you can get at Joann's and Michael's, but you have to admit that these are exquisite and the ultimate luxury in crochet. So if you wanna treat yourself, I think you would really enjoy this crochet hook. Plus, if you have any issues with your hands, like arthritis or other pain, the design of these crochet hooks originated for ergonomic comfort. So you might get a lot more joy out of your crafting by using one of these. And again, that is a review of the Furls Odyssey Luxury Crochet Hook. And I'll include links to all the products I reviewed today in the description box below so you can go take a look and try them out for yourself if you're interested. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you've enjoyed this little review of several new and noteworthy knitting needles as well as one crochet hook. Now, have you tried out any of these tools? Do you already have them in your knitting or crochet collection? And if so, how do you like them? Are they working out for you? And if you don't have them, are there any that you're interested in testing out that you saw today? Or maybe you haven't heard of these before. Um, let me know your experiences and your background with the items I reviewed today in the comment section below. You can always leave a comment as well if you have any questions about today's show or if you have an idea for what you'd like to see on future episodes or if you'd like to see a product tested. I always love hearing from you and I read all of your comments for every video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you in the next video. For next week, I think it might be time to talk about biosynthetic fibers, like yarn made from soy, milk, corn, and bamboo. How do they make yarn out of milk? There are so many different biosynthetic fibers, but I'd like to talk about at least some of the different types and how they're made. So get ready for another interesting exploration of weird yarns. I hope you'll join me for that next week. And until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week. Bye everybody.